Good morning, welcome to Fairy and Spoil. Today I'm going to talk to you about how to stop hot spots. Unfortunately, when Albert was tiny, he had a really, really bad time with them. So bad that we did have a chat about whether or not it was fair to be keeping him alive. But I managed to completely stop them and we've had nothing at all ever since. I've worked really hard at researching it and he hasn't had any ever since. So when we get back from our walk, I'll tell you all about it. See you later, bye. So we're back from our walk and um, they're having their sleep now after their walk. So this is Albert, this is the dog in question that I was telling you about earlier that had really bad hotspots. Right, so in this video, I'm gonna tell you what a hotspot is, then I want to tell you about prevention, so a lifestyle to prevent the hotspots coming. Then I'm gonna tell you what to do if you get hotspots. And then I'm gonna tell you what to do if you've got a hotspot and you're losing control of it and you've gotta to go to the vet. I'm gonna tell you what to ask for when you get to the vet. Please believe me when I tell you this is a subject I am an absolute expert in. I have had to be because like I said, the vet was talking about putting Albert down because of it. And I don't agree with much that vets do. I really, really don't. Um, but in this situation, at that time, I kind of agreed with him because Albert was really suffering. Um, but like I said, I gave myself two days and I researched, I sat up night and day researching um, and I've, I have managed to sort it all out. And he has had nothing now for, so he's gonna be nine next week. <laughs> I can't believe it, but he's gonna be nine next week. And he started all these problems in the first year of his life. So we've had a good eight years of not a single hotspot. And it's not that the, it's not there, it's just I've kept it under control the whole time. Um, and I can tell when there would be the potential for a flare up and manage to keep it all well under control. So please believe me that I know what I'm talking about with this. I mean, I know what I'm talking about a lot with dog stuff, but this is such a subject dear to my heart. So I'm just, I've, gonna, I've written it all out and I'm just gonna go through bit by bit. So the first thing I want to talk to you about is what a hotspot is. Now I haven't dictionary definition this or anything. This is my experience and also a lot of other dogs' experiences. And because of my experience, I've helped an awful lot of other dog owners um, help sort their dogs out. So this is, you know, how it works. Now they're caused by allergies. It may be obvious like in the spring or the autumn, it might be an obvious allergy or you may never know what your dog is allergic to. Um, it doesn't really matter if you never know. It doesn't matter um, because you can still sort it out. It's an itch. That's a big part of it. It's, it's an itch. And then it becomes a red patch. And then that red patch very quickly becomes a wound, a wet. It's not exactly oozing at this stage, but it's very wet and there's the blood and everything. Um, and then it can get infected and then you're in a right mess. So I'm going to go through the first thing. So I go through, I do prevention. So prevention is key. And doing this prevention lifestyle with him means that he doesn't get anything at all. Now, my other dog, Harry, he has got some Bichon in him. He's got, he's a white old mix, but he does have some, are you leaving? I'm recording though, darling, I'm recording. Um, he does have some Bichon in him. And I think that if I, and I have him on this um, prevention lifestyle, and I think if I didn't have him on that, there would be the potential for him to have hotspots. But like I said, he never has because of what's been happening. So prevention is key. So don't just be doing this when your dog gets itchy or gets hotspots or when it's the spring or when it's, don't be doing that. Do this all the time as a lifestyle and you won't have any problems with it. Because it is awful for the dogs, but it's pretty awful for you as well. So um, it's really worth putting the effort in. So I'm gonna go into the kitchen now and I'm gonna show you some of the products that I use. So these are the products that I use every single day. And I am not exaggerating when I tell you they save my dog's life. So please don't just be flipping about this. These products I use every single day. And I use them because they are proven they they've i've researched them um, the the ingredients that are in them proves to stop dogs having hot spots and itchiness and allergy issues and then i've been doing it for the last eight years and i've proven that it was worked and like i said with a whole load of other dogs that i've helped as well so the first thing is let me do this first so pyroton now pyroton um is it's the same as the human one but you need to get it at, so I just want to look at my notes. I've written everything down. Um, well, it's four milligrams of, of 
the tablets are four milligrams per 10 kilograms of dog twice a day. So just let me, oh sorry, let me just repeat that. For a four milligram tablet for a 10 kilo, kilogram dog twice a day. So my dogs are around 10 kilograms and I give them two tablets a day and the tablets are four milligrams. Now, um, if you go into Boots, you can get, if you go into Boots, you can get tablets that are, you can get some tablets that are two milligrams. Um, so you can get two milligrams, four milligrams, and then you can go up, but don't go above four milligrams for a 10 kilogram dog. Now, if your dog weighs more than 10 kilograms and you're unsure about how much to give your dog or you're nervous about giving them Pyroton, what you could do is go to the vet, tell them you want to your dog put on Pyroton, they'll happily do it because they charge you extortionate money for the tablets. So get to the vet, get them put on Pyroton. They will therefore tell you the correct dose. Then come home, get onto um, Google and order these tablets yourself and they are so much cheaper. But it's exactly the same tablet and it's just as safe. And that's what I've been doing for, like I said, the last eight years with my dogs. So if you look, these are the ones we use. Now I'm not um, actually gonna advocate these over anything else because we actually, just because they're the ones we get. But, um, but we'll get them from anywhere. You know, we're okay. It's not a particular brand that does better than others, but it's those Pyroton tablets. And it's just the same, you know, just human hay fever tablets. They are absolutely um, really, really important. Now what I do is I up and down the dose on them a bit. With um, both of my dogs are on these because uh, Harry does get a bit itchy like in the spring. So what I do with Harry is he's not the one. Albert is the really bad hotspot dog. Harry, the other one, I will up and down him. So in the spring, like at the moment I've upped him a bit because the pollen count is just so high. Um, and so I've upped him, I will up him in the spring if, and I'll up him in say maybe sometimes when you're in its leafy season, there's leaves all over the floor. Sometimes that can cause them to get itchy feet. So if that happens, I'll up him to two. Albert stays on two all the time. So Albert's the one who had the hotspot problems and he stays on two all the time. Two a day, all the time. Morning and evening, all the time. That never changes. Sometimes when you first put them on the Pyroton, it can cause constipation. If that happens, I just reduce the amount for a few days and then bring them back on. But um, once they get used to it, then that, that doesn't happen anymore. Um, in the beginning, it can make them a little bit drowsy, but that's quite nice because it gives them a bit of a break. But then once they get used to it, that stops. Doesn't make my dog drowsy at all now and there's no constipation issues. I've got nothing but good things to say about Pyroton. Absolutely vital. The next thing is coconut oil. This has got all, if you Google the benefits of coconut oil, it's anti everything. Anti this, anti that, anti everything. And one of the things that it is anti is it gets rid of bacteria in the body, bad bacteria. And so it fights anything that's bad. And it's that bacteria that's causing the hot spots. And so coconut oil, I single-handedly will put, well, not just single-handedly, but coconut oil, a massive part, massive part of us not having problems anymore. And when, like I said, that time when Albert was bad and the vets were gonna put him down, I noticed the second I started putting, giving him coconut oil, I saw an immediate change and an immediate improvement. So if your dog's suffering now with, with, with hot spots, and you can't change anything else right now in this moment, you can go to the shop, get some coconut oil, and really, it makes such a difference. And what I do is I just get a little spoon, sorry, look at my messy knife and fork drawer, just a tiny little spoon, and I just probably, like the, just that bit there, sort of a little, you know, just a take like that, you can't see, <laughs> take like that, just scrape it along the bottom, like that, and so about that much of the coconut oil. Um, they, my dogs will just eat it neat, but I put it in their dinner just so that you know it's part of that routine. The other thing that I do every day, and again, absolutely valuable. Now this is important. I don't give Harry coconut oil every day. In fact, I hardly ever give it to, to Harry, and that's because he doesn't suffer with hot spots. He's not. He doesn't have itchy skin. However, he is really predisposed to being fat. I'm constantly on a mission to keep him slim, and um, this is a high fat fat product. Um, because he's not itchy. If he was an itchy, itchy dog that was predisposed to be fat, I would still give him the coconut oil and I would sort out the rest of his diet so that um, he didn't get fat. I would all, no matter what fat thing, whatever, I would give the dog coconut oil. But obviously your dog shouldn't be fat. You don't want your dog to be fat, so that's a whole different issue, but keep your dog nice and slim. 
um, and give him the coconut oil. So I don't give the coconut oil to Harry every day. In fact, he hasn't had the he hardly has the coconut oil ever because he's not itchy. But um, Albert, he's the one with the problem. Every single day in both his so he's fed twice a day, and so I give him the amount I just showed you twice a day, and that is absolutely vital. Don't be really careful with it's tempting I think sometimes with um, hot spots to rub coconut oil into the hotspot. And I think that's a bad thing to do because the hotspot can't breathe because you need it to dry up. A hotspot is naturally wet and you need it to dry up. So you, I wouldn't rub coconut oil into the wound. You're much better off getting it into the dog and letting it get to the skin that way. Um, yeah, I, I, I would be really careful with that. What I would say is if you've got a dog that has no fur and they're a bit itchy, they might bend, if you haven't got hot spots but you've just got general itchiness, they would probably benefit from a good rub down with coconut oil, put it in between your hands, melt it down, and a good rub down, but not for hot spots. Now the other thing is this salmon. Both of my boys have this every single day when we get back from our walk. If you've watched my what I feed my um, dogs video, then you'll see this in there, and every single day they get um like back into my messy knife and fork drawer again, a spoon like this, probably about a maybe a heap spoon of that every day and um, the reason that this is so good is because it has all the oil in it now when you buy frozen salmon or you buy fresh salmon it doesn't have all the oil i mean there are oils but nothing like they are in here it's absolutely swimming in oil and that oil is what keeps the skin soft and supple and it takes away itchiness and it just does so much good i can't tell you enough how important this is um, salmon oil really really important so that's the prevention there's one more other thing is absolutely no grains no cereals at all get rid of them so you need your dogs to go on to a hypoanogenic dog food which sounds scientific and complicated it isn't and it's very very available and it basically just means that there's no cereals or grains in the food if you haven't watched my video what I feed my dogs it's probably worth watching it because or there's going to be another video actually um about the composition of dog food and that will really help you to understand if you don't understand how to read the ingredients in dog food it will really help you to understand but you really need to get a dog food that has no grains and no cereals and whether it's because it says it on the front does it actually say it on the front of the yeah look grain free recipe but i mean i already knew it was but it's, it's vital you have to get them off the cereals and off the grains that is so vital when um the situation with albert was first happening i got them i wouldn't even give him treats give him a treat with cereal in it unless a treat was just pure meat i wouldn't give it to him um now it's not now i've relaxed that completely he can have whatever treats he needs and it's fine but um when you're first starting i absolutely so but but i would never feed albert food with cereals or grains in it never honestly i can't tell you enough don't do that because that really causes the hot spots to come please don't do that because it's really bad so you want grain free food i'm sorry if i'm being a little bit sort of dictating with this but i feel so passionately about it um, i nearly lost my little albert because of it and oh it makes me feel a bit choked up really um I, and i just you know i i, I if your dog's suffering i i, I want to be able to help right so that is all the stuff that i do i'm just checking my list right absolutely no white fish now i don't know why i have no idea why never been able to find out why but white fish absolutely here we go that's the one with no problems and this is my little album um absolutely no white fish i have absolutely no idea why it is like it is but it it's just really bad for hot spots it causes them really almost instantly it's really really bad for them so no white fish no cereals no grains and no beef beef is another one now it's not as bad as white fish and it's not as bad as cereals but it's still bad and it can cause hot spots um, and it can certainly aggravate them if you're already in a bad situation so no beef um, the other thing is to keep their fur short that's really important because that stops the skin um, if you do get a hot spot you're able to deal with it an awful lot better also means the hot spot's able to breathe so it might not develop quite as badly 
um, but that's that's a really important thing keep their fur really short so you can see we groom our boys ourselves so but even if you don't when you go to the groomers just have them kept really really short let's see how short albert is there so he's a bichon well a mix of things but there's a lot of bichon frise in him and it would be very easy to keep him in sort of the bichon because he looks cute and all that but that's not what this is about it's about making sure that they're kept nice and that the hotspots don't breed right so that is prevention really next i'm going to go on to treatment um if you do the things i've done you really will get rid of your hotspots like, trust me you will right now treatment okay so, so posing you're at the stage where you are you've got hotspots when a hot spot is brewing under the skin but you can't see it they do a thing called darting and it's when they'll just they'll be lying down and then suddenly they'll just sit up and dart like across the room or they'll just sit up and dart to the other end of the sofa or whatever but they get up and they just dart and it's like someone not you know like someone just pricked them and they get up and they jump up and they dart and that is what's happening when they're under the skin and you can't see them that's the first sign you've got hot spots there's something else a lot of dogs when they first when they're having hot spot issues but they haven't actually got the hot spots it can give them a, a runny tummy so that's that can be a signal to you so the darting is a thing now what i do with the darting is if what they'll do is they'll dart and then they might scratch in an area but it's a bit vague and you can't really tell where they're scratching um and so I'm going to show so there's something that I use for that. And what I do is I get this, put, let me, so let me show you. So if you've seen any of my other videos, you will know how much I'm always going on about tea tree cream and how I absolutely love it. And I don't use anything else on my dogs. So anything, if I get an ins insect bite or anything, I use tea tree cream. So every morning, this goes onto my dog's paws. So itchy paws, so it's a different subject and I've done a whole different video about it. But I put this on... Um, my dog's feet every morning but that's for itchy paws it's a different subject but if you get a hot spot this stuff here so johnson's tea tree skin calm is absolutely brilliant now the product is absolutely brilliant um but more importantly this is a liquid and that means it's able to soak into the skin much much quicker so what i do is if there is if there was supposing there was darting and i'll still do this now because sometimes they'll get bitten by something out in the garden like a little bug or something but you, it hasn't come up yet and so they might do the darting and then what i'll do is i'll get this spray it into my hands rub it in my hands and then rub the whole area where i saw them itching but nothing's coming up so if you're sort of itching but nothing's coming up get this on your hands and it is liquid and it soaks in really quickly and they think you're just stroking them but you're managing to get this and you're managing to get it over a whole area and i'm on every time i've done this it's just stopped it nothing's come up they haven't itched it again it's been great um and this tea tree cream i use that if they well i had a if my dogs get bitten obviously not with other dogs with insect bites obviously that's nothing to do with hot spots but um i will always use that on it and it sorts it out so quickly and with hot spots um to get rid of the hot spots i used to put that on it and it's absolutely brilliant with both these products if you've got a hot spot these both these products will work really really well now i'm a big fan of the johnson's one just because i've used it forever and it's never let me down but you might find other tea tree products and what i'm hoping is that other people will put into comments what they use and have found very successful um, and so you can get a variation but this is personally what i've been using for the last eight years and it's absolutely brilliant so if you get a hot spot use these products now what i do is i've put these products on and then carry the dog around so that he can't lick it and it's got a chance to go in obviously if your dog's too big to carry you just need to find a way to distract them because um because you need the cream to go in you don't just want them to lick it off i'm just going to shame harry a little bit here he's all wet because he just rolled in fox poo and so he had to come home and have a bath didn't you darling <laughs> um right so that's that what else can i tell you let me just have a little look at my list you could oh look at little albert bless his little heart right so tea tree cream i've told you about that now so you want you to stop your dogs from licking the cream off now they will lick it off a bit and there's nothing wrong with that and that cream in no way harms them so you're not going to have to worry about that but you don't want them licking it off too much because you want it to go into the wound 
so you do need to try and stop them from licking it. I personally am so against head cones in situations with hot spots because the, having an itch and not being able to get to it is absolutely unbearable for the dogs. And they'll find another way. They'll drag themselves around their bed or scratch up against the wall. They'll find a way to scratch it. So I'm really massively against head collars, you know, cones to stop them scratching. Now I know this is easy for me to say, but in my opinion, if your dog has got a hot spot, never leave them on their own because they will scratch that and before you know it you have got yourself a horrific wound trust me been there now i didn't leave the dog on his own i was working little albert was under my um, table under my desk i wasn't concentrating on him and he had a hot spot and he scratched it and it suddenly became this big gaping wound and i rushed him to the vet don't leave your dogs on your own if you've got hot spots the itching is too much for them and they will just you it's shocking in such a short space of time what damage they can do and that goes for night time too so luckily they sleep on our bed and that was a life-saving during that time because it meant if i if i could hear him i could sort of feel if he was scratching and i could just jump up put cream on and and it would be and it and it's got us through it don't underestimate the damage a dog will do to himself you'd think it would hurt and they wouldn't do it but they do it, so please don't underestimate the damage a dog will do to itself with a hot spot. So in my opinion, do not leave a dog on his own if he's got hot spots. I know it's not easy, I know, I know, I know. I know it's not always easy to do, I know that. But in my opinion, you are better off finding someone to look after them, because you've got to keep applying the cream. Um, and then get the heat hot spot sorted, and then if you need to leave them on their own or whatever, but in my opinion. Um, don't cover the hot spot you need to get air to it don't put any bandage or anything on it you need to get air to it that's really important because if you cover it you can it will hot spots don't naturally get infected but they will get infected if they're not kept clean or if um, you cover them up you don't want them to get hot and sweaty you want them to get air air to them something that i used to do with albert was um obviously you don't want him scratching the hot spot and you don't want to scratch the hot spot but you know like if we get a nap bite and you're told to scratch around the outside of it and it sort of helps, doesn't it, a little bit. I found that actually quite helpful to um, just get your nail, your fingernail, or a piece of tissue and just rub around the outside of the hotspot and it sort of just relieves it. But quite honestly, the tea tree cream, that relieves it. That relieves it. Now you can get itch wipes. I can't say they work or they don't work. I'm not sure either way. They can do no harm. Um, right uh if you've got a hot spot another thing that i'm a massive fan of is hibby scrub now we don't have any at the moment because like i said we haven't had hot spots for eight years and so um, i haven't had to do my dogs but hibby scrub is a disinfectant soap that hospitals use before they do operations it's pink and again the vets will give you some that's how i came across it um but then you can go and buy it yourself off amazon or whatever and it's just hibby scrub h-i-b-i and you just you know put it into the water put it in some water it comes up all bubbly and then you can either dab like use tissue or whatever dab the hot spot or, or if the hot spot if the dog's small enough so what we used to do with albert was fill the kitchen sink up with hibby scrub it's all bubbly and lovely and pink um and then put him in there and then just bathe down all the hot spots and what that's doing is it's cleaning them so that's keeping them nice and clean so hibby scrub is, was a massive part of um, recovery um, and since I've, um, like I said, I've helped a lot of other dogs with hot spots and I've always said hibby scrub and they've always said, yeah, once you start the hibby scrub, not only does it get rid of any infection if you have got any, but it, it, there is no infection. So you're not dealing with infection, you're just dealing with trying to get the hot spot to dry up. Um, okay, so that's that. Um, now I want to talk to you about if you've got a hot spot and you're losing control of it. If right, so you, you at this point, I would rec say you need to get to a vet and you need to um, you need to get hibby scrub. Now, in my opinion, vets are rubbish at treating hot spots because they never ever look at the whole lifestyle of a dog. This isn't the most interesting video, but I just want to be concentrating on what I'm talking about. So we just we're going to be watching a little loud, but have you sleep? Um, vets never look at the whole lifestyle of the dog. They just look at the hotspot, 
as it is. And that is of absolute no use to anybody because what's that achieving? It's not achieving anything because you've still got the underlying conditions. Other hotspots are gonna come. Even if you've got rid of that one, which is really impossible to do if you're not treating everything, but other ones will come. And so, in my opinion, the only benefit VETS can give you is if you've got to the point where you're losing control of your hotspots, you can go to them. Now, they will want to put you on steroids. I am massively against this because steroids, not only do they cause, like, long term, your dog can come up with all sorts of issues. If you put your dog on steroids, you will shorten your dog's life. But while the dog is on steroids, it's a really awful experience for them because they get really hungry, really thirsty, they have to go to the toilet all the time. It's such an unpleasant experience. And in my experience, they've never, because we put Albert on them, they didn't help the hotspots at all. So I got him straight off the steroids. This was when we were talking about having him put down. It was kind of like, well, we've got nothing else to lose here. Um, I got him straight off there. That was rubbish. But what I will say, and what I think is, is, is a good product if you're losing control, is steroid spray. Now, steroid spray is just a steroid in a spray. Now, it does go into the skin, so technically it is as bad as a steroid. It can be as bad as a steroid in that it's, it's not a great product. It's not a great thing to be doing. But it's nowhere near as strong as a normal steroid tablet, so you don't have that same hunger that they get with steroids. Um, but it can cause lo long-term illness. So what, but what I would say is if you are absolutely losing control, you've got a hot spot, you're completely losing control, it's got infected, the dog's ripped it open, you're losing control and you need that healed quickly, then steroid spray. And what they'll do is they'll give you a bottle of steroid spray and whether they recommend the hippie scrub, if they're a good vet, they should recommend the hippie scrub because you've got to keep the hot spot clean. But whether they do or whether they don't, get hippie scrub. So what we were doing was hippie scrub, let it out, take him out of the hip water, let the wound dry, the hip, the hot spot dry, and then spray it with the steroid spray. And I think um, we did it for three days and the hot spots really healed. But what I will also say is at this point, I discovered the danger of grain, how bad grains were, and um, I'd come up with coconut oil, salmon oil. And so I'd blasted them with the whole lot. And so I don't really know if it was the steroid spray so much, or if it was the fact that I had taken him off the grains and I was giving him the coconut oil because I definitely know when we went onto the coconut oil, it was quite incredible how everything just, the itchiness just stopped. But if you're, like I say, if you've really lost it with the hot spot, then I would recommend maybe just go to the vets and get the spray, the steroid spray just for an instant relief, give the dog instant relief and get that hot spot healed up. But the whole point of my whole video is this is a lifestyle. It's not just about if your dog gets a hot spot, go to the vets because you will never win. If you just go to the vets and you get the steroid spray and you get hippie scrub, you will never win. Those hot spots will always be there. They will always be there and, and you will never win. You have got to change what you're feeding your dogs um, and all of that. And I, something else that just struck me is with Albert lying on the floor here. I'm very aware that in the summer and the autumn, but especially in the summer, um, you know, the back doors are always open, that pollen is just floating in. And at the moment, pollen's really high. And so I make sure that I keep my floors mopped because they lie on the floor a lot and then the pollen's on the floor and that altogether can't be a good thing. So I'm very aware of keeping the floors hoovered and mopped so there isn't pollen lying around on it. Um, but it is a lifestyle thing. It's a whole lifestyle thing. And anybody that has come to me with um, hotspot problems and they've half-heartedly done it and they've gone to the vets and they've got the spray and they've done this and done that, but it's half-hearted. They're still feeding them a really cheap, nasty food. They, the dog hasn't got better. And I've said to them, your dog will not get better. You will go through this all the time if you don't take your dog off this rubbishy food with cereals and grains. It's not something I've made up. It's a fact. If you feed your dog grains and cereals, you're going to have an itchy dog if they're predisposed to that. Even if your dog isn't predisposed to that, it's really, really bad for your dogs to eat grains and cereals. They would never eat that in the wild. It's very, very bad for them. So it's really not best to do that. But for hot spots, it's vital to get your dog off the, off the, off the grains. And then on the other side of it, you know, people have come to me, come across me on Instagram or whatever and come to me and I've told them, he's going to bark now, Is the, I bet the postman's coming. Albert, Albert, 
you're on video darling you've been videoed barking at the look at that tail proper dominance tail you're being videoed sweetheart barking at the postman do you care he doesn't care so that's it so i hope that that has helped because hot spots are horrendous for dogs and for you so um, i hope that some of that has helped this is a long video but there's an awful lot of information i wanted to get across um, and to help your dog if you've got any questions at all pop them into comments and please if your dog is suffering and you don't know what to do don't hesitate to reach out to me and i will help you um, we are on Instagram, we are on Twitter, depending on when you're watching this video, I'm in the process of doing the Furry and Spoil website, so it may or may not be up, depending on when you're watching it. Everything is under Furry and Spoil. And I hope that you have a really lovely day, and that we'll see you in the next video. Bye bye.